Hi guys and welcome to Journey Through to the Centre of the Earth. This is Activity 2B, looking at erosion for Year 8. Okay, so, as we learned in the last um, unit, rocks can be broken down by a process of weathering. And by breaking them down, they can be converted into boulders, pebbles, um, even gravel. But once they've been um, weathered and broken down, they then need to be transported from one place to another. Now this process of transportation is called erosion and there are three main elements which basically make up this process of transformation, transportation and they are running water, wind and gravity. And as a result they go, for, these forces work together to actually um, shape the landscape that we know today. And you can see in this uh, picture here of the glass mountains in Queensland, Australia, we've got these um, huge rocks which are sticking out of this sort of plateau of land now how did they come about now that could have been because of some uplift of the uh, continental plates or it could be down to the process of weathering and erosion where the hard rocks those are the ones that are standing remain and the soft rocks have basically been weathered away and transported elsewhere mainly to the sea this leaves these landscapes just sticky these these rocks sticking out on the landscape um, for us for us all to appreciate Okay, so how does the process of erosion work? Well, mainly it works in the way of, um, or the best way is using running water. Now running water moves very, very quickly. Obviously the faster it's moving, the more erosion you're going to get. Think about a sandcastle that you've got on the beach and you pour a large bucket of water over the sandcastle, it will disappear very, very slowly. You put a, a small trickle of water over your sandcastle and the result is it's going to um, remain for a lot longer. Now, what happens is the running water carries the rocks and pebbles from high areas up in the, in the mountains down to the lower areas, those low areas being the sea, and this is all under the influence of gravity. The steeper the slope, obviously the, the more influence gravity has, the faster the water moves. Now you know that there's stuff in the water because the water is not clear. Sometimes you'll see very muddy areas um, occurring due to the huge amount of sediment which is carried in that water. Think about what happens when it's um, when you have a flood. If you have a flood, the, the, the water is incredibly muddy, it's fast moving, carrying huge amounts of debris, very dangerous sort of situation to be in. Now what happens is that water then will follow channels. Now the channels will literally be carved out of the soft rock. It will move in between harder rock. Now with time, it can carve out huge gullies and canyons and that can go really, really deep. And the water will move pretty fast. And you'll find um, that on certain bends of the river, the water will be flowing faster than at other areas. And as a result, it cuts away at those areas. So generally on the outside of a, um, of a bend of a river, it's going to be quite shallow. There's not going to be a huge amount of erosion and wearing away. Whereas on the inside of the bend, it's going to be running really fast. And as a result, you're going to get more erosion and that's why you see that the uh, banks of the river often are quite steep whereas on the outside they're quite shallow and you get these little beaches which are formed where the sediment lays down. Now eventually that fast moving water will cut through the rock, cut through the rock until it reaches the main bedrock which is really really hard and at that point the actual erosion will really begin to slow down because that rock is, is tough to get through. So as a result, we, we basically have a variety of different types of erosion due to this movement of mainly water. Now, firstly, the big one where we're dealing with water is coastal erosion. Now you can see here the 12 apostles down in um, Victoria. At one time, those rocks were actually all together. But with constant buffeting by the sea, the sea has worn away and taken those soft rocks away back out to sea. And as a result, have produced these pinnacles of rock which are sticking out. Now eventually they will disappear and you can see at the bottom of the middle rock, especially on the right hand side, how the water is beginning to eat away at that bottom. Eventually it's going to fall down into the sea. So we get coastal erosion and we've got many um, uh, examples of coastal erosion. As we say we've got the 12 apostles here, we've got another arch and you can see the water is cut away on that inside of the arch. Before long that um, bridge part over the arch it will break away to produce two large standing um, pieces of rock. Here's Eagles Rock. So at one stage this probably would have formed an arch or been joined with another area of rock but this just happens to be hard enough to withstand the water so it's the remaining piece left over from the landscape 
and you can see how the water is cut in and raise it back and see stacks again in Victoria. Okay, the next one we've got is the idea of um, wind. Now this is the wave rock in Western Australia. Now if you've ever been on the beach in, on a windy day, and especially if you've been wearing shorts, you'll notice that that sand can be blown up by the wind and it's really quite painful. Now if you've ever heard of sandblasting, sandblasting is where you actually take sand and you blow it incredibly hard at an object and this is enough to actually take paint off cars, um, paint off a variety of different things. Well this is exactly what's happened in nature here. The wind has actually carved out its own um, shapes using sand and it, the tiny particle are, are fired really really fast by the wind into the rock and it's just taken little chunks over millions of years. What it's done is produce this fantastic rock formation where the wind just follows the gully and cuts out little bits of um, little bits of rock. Another form is um, glacial. Now glacier is basically a large sheet of ice. Now if you go to New Zealand um, Franz Josef Glacier um, is a good example of this where you've got a huge sheet of ice which is actually creeping towards the sea. Now the ice is carrying um, obviously frozen water now that's really sharp and what you'll find is it will cut away and make grooves in the rock and taking tiny pieces of um, rock down to the sea so hence the uh, idea of erosion. And when the glacier actually disappears you can actually see the cuts in the rock which show where the, the glacier is actually being um, um, has, has melted away but has, has left its path. Now what you'll find at the base of the glacier it will begin to melt and um, because it melts it produces something called glacial milk. Now the glacial milk is basically tiny fragments of rock and sediment which has been carried away and it has a sort of um, creamy appearance so hence the, the concept of um, glacial milk that can actually uh, be produced. This photo here just shows the um, the ice creeping and it can, it can be moving um, in our terms not particularly fast maybe a couple of centimeters a year but you know in um, geographical um, timeline that that's really really quick the final one that we've got is human erosion now if you ever been hiking and you've you followed a path you have contributed to human erosion erosion fancy kicking a stone well if you kick a stone you have actually transported it from one place to the next so you've eroded the path away now more often than not you'll see that people will say I'll oh, keep to the path why they're saying that is so that you don't erode other areas of the actual landscape but tracks have actually been generated not only by man but also by animals they will follow a specific path and by following that path rocks and um, vegetation is either trampled down or kicked to the side and the result is they will move from one place put rain on that, put wind on that, and again you start generating this whole process of erosion. Now that path could get bigger if it's continually used, or it could disappear and nature could take it over if it's not being used, and as a result it will disappear. Okay, so hopefully that explains to you the, the concept of erosion, this transportation. Um, have a look through on the, uh, the video again, look at some of the pictures, try and link the ideas as to what's been going on because later on when you start doing your questions you'll be asked what caused this what was the process that caused um, these formations to occur and if you can put some of these ideas down on paper that's going to be a really good thing okay thank you for watching and join me again